Greetings from Fort Wayne, where this afternoon, one of the Summit League's hottest teams, Oral Roberts, is here to take on a Purdue-Fort Wayne squad that's looking to shake off a loss last time out. It's the Golden Eagles and the Mastodons coming up next. and a pleasant Saturday afternoon to you. Welcome inside the Allen County War Memorial Coliseum with former Indiana Tech head coach Jeff Parrish. I'm John Nolan, glad to have you with us. And Jeff, it was here last week that the Don suffered a setback against first place South Dakota State, and now it doesn't get much easier against an ORU team that's won three in a row. Honestly, John, I've been looking forward to this game for a week on two counts to see if the Mastodons, number one, can bounce back from what I think was a lackluster performance we didn't see that burn in their eyes, uh, no emotion in the players, and they did not shoot the ball well at all from distance. And on the second hand of that, I want to see Oral Roberts, maybe the most experienced team coming back in the Summit League. They bring back nearly 80% of their scoring. And what I really like about this team, John, is they got balance. And what I mean about balance is they got inside scoring and outside scoring. They got two guards that average over 35 points a game and their big man, their leading scorer at 15 points a game. So balance, I think, is the key for Oral Roberts. Secondly, I talked to Coach, Coach Kaufman earlier in the week, and he thought possibly Oral Roberts could be their toughest test at home this year. And he thought it's going to need a total team effort. So we'll see if the Mastodons can really bounce back here this, this afternoon. It's an Oral Roberts team that's in the top half of the Summit League standings. Those are presented to you by Three Rivers Federal Credit Union. And meanwhile, the Mastodons right there in the middle of the pack. We saw a week ago Oral Roberts in the bottom half of the standings. Now they're up to third in the standings. And a huge game, I think, for the Mastodons to keep that level up in the upper half of the standings. They need a big win here today. And the only team hotter than them, South Dakota State, which has won five in a row, including here last week. Let's take a listen to Coach Kaufman after that one. Obviously disappointed in, uh, in the outcome. Um, and, you know, d disappointed in, in, in the first four to eight minutes how we, uh, how we attacked our game plan. Um, and South Dakota State, they, they made us pay. Um, you know, we, we uh, some of what we do and we hang our hat on, we didn't do very well today. And we were slow to the ball as we executed, and uh, they made us pay. Um, they passed the ball well and made shots early, and then we, we uh, we let that flow over into our into our offensive flow um, and didn't manage adversity and that's been something that we've 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 been challenged with and you know, we're not unique in that as every team of of newcoming groups uh, you know challenges that and you know we got two brand new point guards running the show and so you're going to face some of that and we've gotten better over time but but it, it showed itself in that first half um, and I you know, I just. This has been one of the best defensive teams we've had here in, in my nine years, and um, I just I expect a lot more. Um, now at halftime, um, obviously our our, our, uh, our guys uh, you know, changed our, our, our mentality with that, and we showed the the fight and the resolve and the resilience that uh, that we've hung our hat on here for a long time, and uh, and we executed much much better on both ends of the floor. It's Military Appreciation Day here inside of the Allen County War Memorial Coliseum. So after the national anthem, just had a presentation of colors. Here's tonight's, or this afternoon's, I should say, starting lineups. They're brought to you by Glenbrook Dodge. For the Mastodons, it's the same starting lineup for a fifth game in a row ever since Summit League play began. That's with freshman Deontay Billups inserted with Marcus DeBerry coming off of the bench. And on the other side for Oral Roberts, they've had this same starting five now over the last few weeks, and it's been a successful one for them. Three wins in a row, so you can't argue with that, but more so for Purdue Fort Wayne. John Kaufman emphasized earlier in the week to me, it has to be a total team effort today to take down these uh, Oral Roberts, Golden Eagles. 
Emmanuel Nezekwezi headlining things for ORU. He's their leading scorer and rebounder, averaging 15 and 9 per contest. And he's one of a, a few seniors joined by guards Sam Kearns and then DeAndre Burns, a transfer from Arkansas Little Rock, who at the point has played a big role in this team's success. And then Max Asmus, he's a freshman from the Dallas, Texas area, who's turned into one of the top three-point shooters in the Summit League this year. And Kevin O'Banner, part of what makes ORU a really difficult matchup for the Macedons as he joins Nezikwesi with a presence inside. Yeah, two big bodies on the inside and three, I think, outstanding perimeter players on the, on the outside and featuring the player of the week in the Summit League, DeAndre Burns. Yeah, and then Nezikwesi, for his part, the Summit League's Male Athlete of the Month for a December. So you can see right there, Oral Roberts on the rise here in the Summit League early on, uh, making a statement with three big wins in a row. And uh, we said earlier in the pregame that the Macedons, I, I think this is a huge game for them. They gotta stay on the upper half of that league standings. There is Paul Mills, the third year head coach for Oral Roberts after he spent 14 years as an assistant at Baylor under Scott Drew as part of seven NCAA tournament teams there, including a couple of appearances in the Elite Eight. He's 0-2 here in this building against the Mastodons. As a matter of fact, while they've played 22 meetings all time and split them 11 apiece, Purdue Fort Wayne has won eight of the last nine meetings, including five in a row here in the Summit City. That's going to be a huge, huge factor, I think, here today. That success they've had against Oral Roberts, hopefully they can con continue that here at the Coliseum this afternoon. Yeah, most of that success coming under the leadership of John Kaufman former Summit League Coach of the Year. He said after last week's game, again against South Dakota State, that was a game that they lost in the first eight minutes. He feels like that has been problematic throughout the season, that they have not gotten off to the starts that he has wanted to. So that is certainly a focus here as we begin today. They need that determination, that burn in their eyes. They need a little enthusiasm on the court today. Let's see if they can get jacked up here early and uh, get off to a good start. And we've talked about that several times, John, over the course of the this year, that um, the start of the game has been a little bit of a problem for them. And they, uh, they rely too much on that later part of the game uh, to carry them through. Well, they should be well rested. Meanwhile, for Oral Roberts, difficult travel. They played Thursday night. That was an eight o'clock Eastern time game at Western Illinois. They stayed that night in Peoria, bust here yesterday. Underway with Purdue Fort Wayne at home in white. Oral Roberts on the road in Navy. Jared Godfrey finds Brian Patrick, and that's exactly the start the Don's wanted. Okay, you can tell the first possession, John. The ball was moved crisper. Uh, the cuts to the basket were a lot crisper. Therefore, uh, in rhythm jump shot by Brian, Brian Patrick. Don's had a season low, only four threes made last week against South Dakota State when they fell behind early. You can see right away they're, uh, they're out there challenging the perimeter on defense. Shot clock down to three. It's a three for Eastmas, no good. You can even tell on the bench here, the bench is enthusiastic to start this game. Something that we haven't really seen either, John. A lot of juice and energy early on. Skip pass, quick ball movement, Patrick, corner pop. Offensive rebound for Dylan Carl. Jared Godfrey tees it up and knocks it down. Not a bad start right there, two for three from the three-point line. A lot of talk on the floor, a lot of talk on the bench, a lot of communication. A lot of energy so far from the Macedons. Kevin O'Banner silences them for a moment. Oral Roberts is the highest scoring team in the Summit League, averaging 78 points per game. That's where the Macedons have been most recent years. This year, 
They've played a lower scoring pace. Purdue Fort Wayne averaging 70 points a game. They're a turnover as Patrick had his heel on the sideline. Talk about all this experience from Oral Roberts and the points that they score and the senior leadership. And one thing that that's going to lead to is the turnover ratio for Oral Roberts. They don't turn it over very often, John. Uh, they're very, very efficient with the ball. Both teams only six turnovers in their most recent games. So O'Banner now with five in a row to answer the Mastodons. Good, good. One more. One more. That Holba finds Dylan Carl down low, and the big man goes to work. Little ball fake, got his man to move a little bit, and finger rolled it right over the front of the rim. First lot, foul of the day. A lot of energy out there so far, offensively, defensively. Uh, one of the better starts I think I've seen out of the Mastodons this year. Again, you knew that was an emphasis coming in for Coach Kaufman's group. That foul, by the way, on Jared Godfrey. Emmanuel Nezequese. Fifth year senior. One of the top players in the league. One of the top players in Oral Roberts program history. It's a blocking foul against Eastmas. Two freshmen going head to head. Eastmas part of that tandem for Oral Roberts that averages nearly 35 points a game offensively. You see right there aggressively on defense out on the perimeter as well. Carl, the big man, was trying to lob inside for a guard in Brian Patrick. And it's a turnover. By the way, our officials here this afternoon, Chad Barlow working with Dan Dorian and Greg Langsdorf. The muscular Nezequese with some touch. Right there when he gets that ball on the inside there, Dylan Carl's got to be able to put a body on him, but he's going to have his way offensively all afternoon. It's the third turnover now for the Mastodon, stymieing that quick start. And Oral Roberts, a team that's 8-0 at home this year, only 2-8 and eight on the road, but Jeff, consider this. They played the ninth hardest non-conference schedule in the country. They're battle-tested. They went on the road to the likes of Oklahoma State, Iowa, Wichita State, Creighton, and BYU. Not to mention the in-city rivalry in Tulsa against Tulsa. And if you look at their scoreboard on those games, there wasn't really one game that they got blown out. They were very, very competitive in each of those losses. A double against Nezequese inside. It comes out for Burns. No. And Carl muscles down a board. And while ORU started 0-2 in the Summit League, it began with arguably the two toughest road matchups they'll have all season at South Dakota State and Omaha. Holba in the corner. He could be a key in this game as over the last few years, he was one of the top shooters in all of college basketball. Began this year hot and has been ice cold of late. Desiquese has only attempted 10 threes all year, does his work inside, but misses the runner. Holba steps into it and knocks it down. That was a deep one there that time from Matt. Hopefully that gives him a little bit of confidence. You mentioned he started the season hot, averaging nearly 14 points a game, and now that uh, average has really slipped down to around seven points a game. Was dealing with a hand injury on his right shooting hand. Coach Kaufman, though, says that he's healthier now. Patrick, not shy to let it fly. Extra pass, Holba. Carl sends it out to Godfrey. Phillips for three, way long. Burns, short. 
Next whistle will bring us to our first media timeout. Guys looking a bit gassed. You can see Dylan Carl, Matt Hoba laboring a little bit, getting up and down the floor. But by Brian Patrick, he's got a little bit of energy today, takes it to the hoop. Four point lead for Purdue, Fort Wayne. Oral Roberts projected by Ken Palm. Dot com is a three point favorite. And as a crazy, a big part of the reason why. There's a crazy there, a big time baseline move with the reverse lay in. Another offensive rebound for Carl. Hoba. Yes. Three. Timeout. Golden Eagles. I'll take a timeout as well. Matt Hoba and the Dons soaring early on against the Golden Eagles. The Acme Bar and Grill, where neighbors meet. A Fort Wayne tradition since 1941. We feature nightly dinner specials along with our iconic pizza, wings, and pork tenderloins and barbecue in our family-friendly atmosphere with a retro flair. Additionally, we offer a full bar with 26 beers on tap from various Midwest breweries. We also have an area perfect for private events such as meetings, reunions, and banquets that holds up to 50 people. The Acme Bar and Grill, located in the heart of East State Village, where neighbors meet. At Diamond Residential Mortgage, we understand the importance of keeping pace with technology, and we offer a completely digital loan process to our customers who choose to take advantage of that option. But we also understand the magnitude of a home purchase, and one of our loan officers will work with you every step of the loan process to make sure all your questions are answered and the right type of loan is tailored to fit your needs. See Diamond Residential Mortgage. Purdue Fort Wayne hosting Oral Roberts and with that a matchup of two of the top players in the Summit League in the Macedons, Jared Godfrey and the Golden Eagles, Emmanuel Nezikwesi. Big man, perimeter man. We saw Nezikwesi operate pretty good there on the baseline there with some easy baskets there. Jared Godfrey yet to get on track here where he's made one field goal, uh, a three. Uh, Mastodon's count on Jared for a lot of things. He's got to handle the ball, he's got to play defense, and they count on him big time for his scoring. As well, does Oral Roberts count on Nezikwesi for his outstanding uh, scoring and muscle and rebound on the inside. Godfrey leads the Mastodons in points, rebounds, and assists, and he's one of only about 20 guys in the entire country scoring at least 16 points with five boards and three assists a game. Max Eastmus on the drive, elicits a foul. Max, an 81% free throw shooter here. Averaging 14 points on the year. John Kaufman thought this foul was on the floor. What'd you think? A little continuation there. Is that called in college basketball? It's called in high school basketball. I saw it last night. Had a good slate of games here locally in the area. Did you catch that three quarters length buzzer beater that Snyder had over Homestead? I saw that on uh, a little clip on the news, or and that was quite a shot. That was a legitimate three quarter court shot too. On the road in something of an upset. Brian Patrick. No, Benford keeps it alive. Oral Roberts is the top rebounding team in the Summit League, but keep this in mind, Purdue Fort Wayne has had 10 or more offensive rebounds in nine consecutive games, and they've been the best rebounding team since league play began. Oral Roberts usually out-rebounds their teams by five or more each game, and we'll see how the Macedons do here, especially on the offensive glass. You can see that defensive intensity today by the Purdue Fort Wayne. Pressure in the ball, a lot of talk defensively and switching. Causes the errant shot right there. An air ball for Francis Lotsis from Latvia. Marcus D. Berry finds Brian Patrick. Deontay Billups. 
Patrick from NBA range. Bottom. One thing I've noticed about Brian's jumper here today, he's really elevating. He's getting off the floor. He's got his arm up, his elbows in, and he's a great follow through. He's a lot of energy in his shot today. We didn't see that the other night. With some spring, he leads all scorers early with eight. It's a Golden Eagles turnover. And Jeff, what does it do for a player like Patrick when they have more spring in the shot? What was that? What does it do for a player like Patrick when they have more spring in the shot? Well, number one, he is a scorer. He anticipates scoring, and that's just going to give him uh, confidence. I think he's just got energy. He's got rest. Like we said, they haven't had a game for a week, so he's had a lot of time to prepare physically and mentally for this game here today. Coach Kaufman said the team had a great practice on Tuesday. Guys then had off on a Wednesday. Tion Rollins off the bench. Long on the three. That's out off of ORU. And so it'll be the Mastodon's ball when we come back. Purdue Fort Wayne trying to put an end to a three-game Oral Roberts winning streak. It's the Dons up by six early. Dreaming of getting cash back in your pocket with every purchase you make? With a Visa Rewards credit card from Fort Financial, you can earn 1% back on everything you buy and a low introductory rate of just 3.9% APR with no annual fees or balance transfer fees so you can consolidate debt. You even get online access to view transactions or pay bills. Stop by your local branch or fortfinancialcu.org today. Fort Financial, it's time to live your dreams. It's Purdue, Fort Wayne, and Oral Roberts, the Golden Eagles' most famous alum. Maybe Ned Flanders or Homer Simpson from the Simpsons, but it's a school with a, a proud basketball tradition as well. They've been to the big dance five times. At one point, they were led by current Kansas head coach Bill Self. I think Homer Simpson really got a degree from Oral Roberts. On the show, the connection there, Matt Groenig, the creator of The Simpsons, he attended ORU. Well, pushing and shoving here before the inbounds pass to Demir Black. Marcus D. Berry from the foul line follows it up. Right the elbow! Max Asmus, he leads the Summit League in threes per game, averaging about three triples per contest. And there's his first today. Hey, let's go to Cyclone here. Cameron Benford showing off the post game. Loose ball to Jared Godfrey. Godfrey gets contact and he'll head to the line. Okay, get our pod right here. Okay. Foul on Elijah Lufile. Golden Eagle foul charge to number one. Alonjo with his first team second. With 11-11 left here in the first half. Macedon's here wishing to get back on track at home. Matt Holbrook, number one, will check in with the Macedon lineup. See Jared with a nice little ball fake. Got the defender up in the air, drew the foul. It's been a 68% foul shooter this year. You know what I liked about that move? He came to a jump stop, and we Good talked job, about Matt. that a little bit earlier in the season. The benefits of a jump stop. You keep your body under control, uh, and you can make a move out of that jump stop. You see so many kids today, they want to do the Euro step, or they want to uh, try to jump over somebody or jump into somebody, but a good clean jump stop, make your move. 
Godfrey, the sophomore from Atlanta, like we talked about, he's been one of the best perimeter players in the league this year. Joined in the backcourt by Demir Black, who misses with the left hand. Lotsis up top. He's been way off on both his attempts so far. They didn't even draw a rim that time. Godfrey to the cup. It's a good move by Jerry. Found that senior who was able to get to the basket. It's been kind of lacking, I think, from the Mastodon's game this year that I've seen from past years is that uh, defensive rebound and able to get the ball all the way to the rim in transition. So five for Godfrey and a five-point lead for the Dons. Shot clock down at two. Lotsis from deep. No good. Remember, this floor is shared by the NBA G League's Fort Wayne Mad Ants, Pacers affiliate. They had a game here last night. Godfrey for three. We've talked about it before. It can be perhaps somewhat confusing as you watch and maybe something that affects players too with four three-point lines, a high school one, a women's college basketball one, a men's college basketball line, and the NBA length line. I'm there's sure there's been much confusion. Forgetting about the three-pointer and going for two. I'm sure there's been much confusion. It's, you know, you really don't have time to look down to see exactly where you're at the time. And you see a line down, you probably think you're at the three-point line. Especially when there's four of them out there like a rainbow. Hands <laughs> up! Three colors, at least. Godfrey. Mastodons are 5 of 12 from 3. Oral Roberts, 2 of 8 from behind the arc. Ty Lazenby. That time he looked down and had the ball, he was behind his NBA line that time. A senior transfer from Oklahoma. And Demir Black with a response. Timeout, Mastodons. Obviously, Coach Kaufman saw something he didn't like defensively that last time down the court. You can see Oral Roberts, their last several possessions, they've shot some three-pointers. He might make an adjustment and try to get out on those shooters a little bit better. Close out, get a hand up. And Oral Roberts team that on this season hasn't been particularly good for a three-point range. In fact, that's one of the only categories in which they aren't among the best in the conference. They make eight threes a game, shooting it at 32%. Mastodon's 500 so far through their first four Summit League games. Their recent results brought to you by Holly Pro Concrete Coatings. They have alternated wins and losses so far, trying to continue that trend. Get back above 500 before they head out on the road the next Thursday at South Dakota. Anytime you go to the Dakotas, John, that's a big game. It's a long travel day uh, and very, very difficult to play out the Dakotas. They get some great crowds to their games out there. At this point, all four schools out there it's a corner three, and it's a lead for Oral Roberts. Kevin O'Banner, the big man with range. So Oral Roberts, her last three, four possessions have all been three-point shots. God, one more cut. Great cut. Carl finds a cutting Brian Patrick. Rack attack. Great cut, got great pass that time. Brian Patrick with the springs today, getting up there with the easy dunk. And a lay-in for Desiquezi. That time Dylan Carl didn't do a very good job of getting around. He needs to get on the baseline side of him and get a hand and foot in front. Deontay Phillips on the drive. We'll go to the line for two on the other side. A break in the action with under eight to go in the first half. Back and forth early. It's ORU ahead by one. This little pumpkin's BB. She's my baby, and that's why I'm here. 
All right, looking for something pooch friendly? Yes, I want pumpkin here to feel safe and snuggly when I want to feel rugged. Well, we got plenty of Jeeps, uh, Durangos, plenty of room for the dog in the back. How many will fit comfortably? Uh, seven or eight adults. How many dogs? Oh, 11, 12. Shotgun BB. 13. Glenbrook Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram. We've been fetching deals since 1979. Drive a Scat Pack Dodge Charger over 10,000 off MSRP with Dodge Power Dollars at Glenbrook Dodge. Oh, she got a little too excited. I'll get a towel. This is where ambition meets action. Where you can experience everything and become anything. So ask yourself, what are you going to be? A business leader. An artist. A scientist. A difference maker. A game changer. This is an education with purpose. We are Purdue University, Fort Wayne. With Jeff Parrish, I'm John Nolan. Thanks for spending part of your Saturday afternoon with us. Still relatively early here in 2020. Let's take a look back at some of the best Macedon's players from the last decade. And boy, an impressive list. Very impressive. You know, Fort Wayne has had some great, great college basketball players come through here. And one of my favorite ones of all time, Frank Gaines from Florida. This guy could fill it up from different areas on the floor. He was a slasher. He could get to the basket, left-handed jump shooter. He had a motor that could go and go and go. I really enjoyed watching him play. And Max Landis, another one that I like to play too, he could really shoot the ball. Landis, the only Mastodon to be named Summit League Player of the Year back in 2016. Talking about Gaines, he was the program's all-time leading scorer until John Conchar surpassed him last year. And now Conchar, the Mastodon's first ever NBA player with the Memphis Grizzlies. Bright future ahead here for Deontay Billups, the freshman from Moline, Illinois, near the Mississippi River. Knocks down a pair at the line, and the Dons retake the lead. He's worked himself in the starting lineup here. Now this is his but fifth start now for the Mastodons and uh, continues to grow and grow each game. A few games back, scored a career-high 19, close to home at Western Illinois. Trading points. Macedons had scored the first six today, but Oral Roberts, a team that's won three in a row, and has gotten back into a, a groove. And Holba cutting. No, there's Phillips. Right there's Deontay Phillips. That's one of the reasons he's in the starting lineup. He attacked that offensive glass and was able to anticipate that miss and tip it back in. A double at Nezikwesi. Oh, Banner in the corner. Holba got a piece of it. In and out for Patrick. RJ Fuque pushes the pace. Basket good, but a whistle away from the ball. Score it, yet a foul on ORU's Kevin O'Banner. It was Burns with the basket, but you see that push right there from O'Banner knocking Holba to the floor. A little over aggressive that time. Mastodon's got to do, get back on defense. They just cannot give up easy ones. Because this game, I think John's going to be tight all the way down to the wire. Has been so far. Marcus D. Berry wide open. Good that time. Demir Black did a good job of stopping that transition and keeping the ball out there on the perimeter. John Kaufman has said that Black is the team's best perimeter defender. That's something that Demir takes pride in. He says going back to when he was in high school, that was not his scouting report. But while in junior college, made a lot of progress. Now he pushes the pace after it has a crazy basket. Good kick. One more. One more. 
Black lost it, gets it back, and he's fouled. Fifth foul of the half against Oral Roberts. It's on Aiden Saunders. Saunders, a guy who did not play last time out. A senior from Georgia, like Black. But there's an out-of-bounds play that they used to run for John Conchar. Brian Patrick, he was the circle man that time where he starts uh, on the outside shoulder of the post player and just kind of rubs his man off to get right underneath the basket. He was open there for a split second, but didn't get the ball. Maybe Memphis now running those plays for Conchar. Black misfires, so banner the board. Fuque, corner kick, and the three is pure. DeAndre Burns, who had a message for the Macedon's bench after he knocked it down. Somebody must have been chirping down there at the end of the bench. He answered it with a quick three. Patrick pushed off. It's an offensive foul. That's his second. And he knows right away he set it out. But he watched the big push off by Brian there. With the right arm when he's trying to make that spin move got caught with the push. Right here, this is a critical time, I think, John, in the game with 450 left. The Mastodon's got to get that energy back defensively so they can get some easy baskets offensively. Credit Oral Roberts here for weathering the storm early on. As a queasy with the hook. Nice little jump hook there. Strong, strong move. Poor turnover. Burns. Right there, Matt Hoba kind of fell asleep on the inbounds pass. Didn't see the Oral Roberts circle back and step right in front. And in the blink of an eye, it's an 11 0 run for Oral Roberts on the road. How do the Dons respond? Hoba, a step back three. ORU playing downhill. Max Eastmus, timeout, Purdue Fort Wayne. Yeah, that got John Kaufman a little hot right there. The easy basket, the steal on the inbounds, pay up in the inbounds pass, and then the easy fast break, and nobody stepped in front to stop the downhill run by Oral Roberts. The Dons are in danger, down a dozen. Dreaming of getting cash back in your pocket with every purchase you make? With a Visa Rewards credit card from Fort Financial, you can earn 1% back on everything you buy and a low introductory rate of just 3.9% APR with no annual fees or balance transfer fees so you can consolidate debt. You even get online access to view transactions or pay bills. Stop by your local branch or fortfinancialce.org today. Fort Financial, it's time to live your dreams. My philosophy has always been, what would I do if this was my mother? You have the blessing from God to know that you're serving in a capacity that you truly love. This isn't a job to me. They're coming to us at their most vulnerable. They're coming to us at a time when they're dealing with something totally unexpected. And when you see people go through that every day, it kind of gives you uh, motivation to be your best. We have some of the best clinical staff that I have ever worked with in my 20 some years of healthcare. Plenty of kids here on a Saturday afternoon at the Allen County War Memorial Coliseum. And did you know that Mastodon's Kids Club members get free admission to all home events and a t-shirt plus an ID badge. If your child's not already a Kids Club member yet, sign them up for just $10 at GoMastodons.com. Purdue Fort Wayne got off to a strong start here against an Oral Roberts team that's on a three game winning streak, but all of a sudden it's ORU on a 13 0 run. That guard combo for Oral Roberts, but Burns and Acemas up to 16 points. There are the first two points for a post in Cam Benford. So that ends the run, and we'll see if the Dons can chip into this deficit before halftime. Ben 
Bradford poked it away from Nezikwesi. Holba ahead to Billups. Fuque finds a trailing Acemas. Short, debury the board. His outlets intercepted. Purdue Fort Wayne last time out had only six turnovers. They've already got seven in this first half. And now Earl Roberts turns it over. And it's an offensive foul against Emmanuel Nezikwesi. Only the third turnover for the Golden Eagles. Nezikwesi that time, he, he's been kind of eyeing ball and the referee thinking that he's being held, but he's the one that got it caught Holden pushing off that time. Well, he's so strong, certainly uh, a challenge for officials in the Summit League to call a game with him featured. One more, one more, one more. Deontay Phillips finds it open, Matt Holba, book it. Good job by Deontay that time. The penetration that drew the defense towards him, and he was able to kick it back out to Matt standing by himself on the three-point line. So a 5-0 answer here for the Dons. That dribble penetration, that's a huge key to the Mastodon success, I think. It draws that defense, and one extra pass out, you're going to get an open jumper. That's a queasy going to the line. Big strong man underneath the basket at that time. Got ganged up by about three Mastodons that time. There's a Quasi, just about a 74% free throw shooter. Not bad for a big guy. Good touch. He was seven for seven last time out at Western Illinois. He's a computer IT major. Very active volunteering in the Tulsa area. And just yesterday it was named that he's one of 30 finalists nationally for the Senior Class Award. That's an honor that factors in not only performance in one's respective sport, but also academics, leadership. And as a crazy, the only Summit League men's basketball player on that list. See if the Mastodon's here with about two minutes, a minute and 57. Get a little dribble penetration, get some action moving. Godfrey was stripped. Saunders. Don's ball. See if the Mastodons here can handle this little bit. Three-quarter court, trapping pressure by Oral Roberts. Trying to create a little turnovers, making the Mastodons think a little bit offensively. Holba, left alone, makes a pay. It's a big shot right there with a minute 20 left in the half to cut that deficit a little bit here going into halftime. Huge shot by Matt. And huge to have Holba back on track. He's now four of seven from distance after he's been mired in a cold spell, has shot around 20% over the last 14 games coming in. For a guy who last year shot 43% from three. Foul called against Godfrey. That's his second. With only five on the shot clock. Jared got his hip out there in the lane a little bit and caused him to trip a little bit. Had his hands off of him, no doubt about that. Coach Kaufman conservative in this spot, doesn't want to risk Godfrey picking up a third foul before the break. So now the two starting leading scoring guards, Godfrey and Patrick, they're on the bench here for the duration of the half. DeAndre Burns, the senior transfer, a big factor. 
A lot of confidence in them seniors shooting the ball from the perimeter. Play like that got DeAndre, the Summit League Player of the Week last week. One and one here for Black, who's the team's leading free throw shooter at 78%. Huge free throws right here with 32 seconds to go. They got to keep this deficit under 10 going into halftime. Chance to get it down to six if Black can convert on both. by Demir that time. Makes it a six-point game. Let's go, RJ. Hey, 30, 33 and 12. 33. About a second difference between the game clock and shot clock here. You'll watch Oral Roberts take it all the way down. Five on the shot clock. A lob and Nezaquazi converts. Phillips takes a look at the timer, gets it off. No good. And that does it for the first 20 minutes. Well, the Macedons last week found themselves down by 20 at the half against South Dakota State. Not quite as large of a hill to climb for the second half here today. But it was Oral Roberts with that 13 0 run midway through the first half that has swung this one in the direction of the Golden Eagles, who lead by eight. I'm just glad that the Mastodons keep it under 10 here going in at halftime. I think that's big for them right now. Like you said, they had that big deficit, a 13-0 run uh, midway through the half. Uh, they overcame that. Now they got to regroup and come out with that hard and strong energy that we saw at the beginning of the game. Coming up on our Lutheran Health Network halftime report, a Summit League Coaches Roundtable featuring ORU head coach Paul Mills. The Acme Bar and Grill, where neighbors meet. A Fort Wayne tradition since 1941. We feature nightly dinner specials along with our iconic pizza, wings, and pork tenderloins and barbecue in our family-friendly atmosphere with a retro flair. Additionally, we offer a full bar with 26 beers on tap from various Midwest breweries. We also have an area perfect for private events such as meetings, reunions, and banquets that holds up to 50 people. The Acme Bar and Grill, located in the heart of East State Village, where neighbors meet. Dream of getting cash back in your pocket with every purchase you make? With a Visa Rewards credit card from Fort Financial, you can earn 1% back on everything you buy and a low introductory rate of just 3.9% APR with no annual fees or balance transfer fees so you can consolidate debt. You even get online access to view transactions or pay bills. Stop by your local branch or fortfinancialcu.org today. Fort Financial, it's time to live your dreams. This little pumpkin's BB, she's my baby and that's why I'm here. All right, looking for something pooch friendly? Yes, I want pumpkin here to feel safe and snuggly when I want to feel rugged. Well, we got plenty of Jeeps, uh, Durangos, plenty of room for the dog in the back. How many will fit comfortably? Uh, seven or eight adults. How many dogs? Oh, 11, 12. Shotgun BB. 13. Glenbrook Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram. We've been fetching deals since 1979. Drive a Scat Pack Dodge Charger over 10,000 off MSRP with Dodge Power Dollars at Glenbrook Dodge. Oh, she got a little too excited. I'll get a towel. Purdue Fort Wayne basketball. Buy your tickets now. Summit League, conference meetings, print media day. Prior to that, we're just going to have a little off the cuff conversation. I'm not even going to ask you about your teams or how yeah. things are going. We're just going to go into some topics that might be relevant to you uh, individually as head coaches, but also kind of from the national landscape uh, side of things. 
First of all, I'll introduce, we've got from Oral Roberts University, head coach Paul Mills from University of North Dakota, head coach Paul Sather. Thanks, gentlemen, for joining us. And first thing I'm going to hit you with is the, the hot button topic everybody's talking about, the uh, Fair Pay to Play Act. We've seen, uh, seen it introduce this legislation out in California, expecting it to happen in Florida, Colorado, Minnesota, and numerous other states. It's um, something that a lot of people have talked about. They talk about it in very general terms. I don't know if anybody has an idea of how it's going to be implemented. <laughs> Coach Mills, I'll start with you. What are your thoughts on the Fair Pay to Play Act, and how might it impact your program? Your program? Yeah, I think every single coach I mean, maybe minus one or two would like for their kids to get more money. You know, a lot of them are from impoverished uh, areas. Basketball is a sport of the poor in America. So I, I grew up that way. You could have a basketball and 15 kids could go down the street and play. Uh, we didn't need gloves or helmets or any of that stuff. And so I think most kids that play basketball from a large portion, specifically in the South, come from socioeconomic disadvantage. So I think all coaches are, how can we get you more money in order to better help you, your family, and your situation? Now, how that gets done is a different question. So I think every coach is for it. I heard Mark Few say last week that, you know, we don't really get into the homelessness problem that politicians often you know, may have to deal with. I don't know why they're jumping into this problem, but I'm sure there is a framework that can work in order to better benefit these kids. I, I haven't put too much thought in it. I'm very much for kids getting money. I just don't know how necessarily that's gonna be implemented. Thanks, Coach Mills. You make a great point. I, I talked to an individual the other day that said, sometimes the fastest way for a politician nowadays to make it into the paper is through the sports yeah section. so yeah. that might have something to do yeah. with the thought process mm -hmm. coach say your thoughts but yeah i'm just trying to get our guys into a stance and practice right <laughs> now honestly trying to worry about whether and, and i think coach brought up some great points on I, I think any coach would want their student athletes to have uh the right financial situation that they you know anything that can improve that is obviously a good thing for for them um but you know that's something that i think over time will will play itself out i do think it's something the ncaa has to have its antennas up on i, I do think there's some things that could be uh it, it's going to be very impactful there's going to be some things that are th these are big time major changes that maybe haven't been going on in the ncaa that are going to be really impactful to to division one programs and and so it's definitely something that we're going to learn more about as, as time goes on. Uh, but honestly, it's not something that's been on the forefront of my mind <laughs> personally. But uh, it, it's, it's interesting, you know, when people have been making money off other people's likeness and, and they haven't been able to make any money off that, there's just something about that it isn't fair. So it, it, it's definitely, there's some things about it that make a lot of sense, but I'm not the guy to figure out how that, hap how that happens. But I'm sure they'll let us know when it does. I hope I have the problem. LeBron has been a very big advocate for this, but I hope I have the problem of having a Zion Williamson yeah. to say this is kind of the guy who we're trying to, to look. He deserves it. He's getting a lot of public exposure. If the Summit League is having to deal with this issue, uh, we're going to be in a pretty good situation. Yeah. Great points. I, I think uh, another coach said defined fair. Yeah. which I thought was really an interesting perspective. And I also thought it'd be interesting to have all of our current high school seniors sit down and write what they think they would be worth wherever they went. Yeah. That might be a little <laughs> bit That'd different than Seattle. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I, I appreciate that, the, the, the comments. Uh, let's jump to something that is directly going to impact this season. They move the three-point line back to the international distance. Um, how does it impact your program? How does it impact the game in general? Start with you well, it, it's going to be interesting just to see the, some of the defensive changes that might take place and how teams defend. You know, ball screens being one of them. I, you know, I just that, that, to me that's something that we're battling a little bit, just trying to figure out if there's anything we want to do defensively that's different than what we've done in the past. Um, you know, I, I, you know, I think t kids have become such a. I, we used to do things with like keep track of their, their makes from mid-range to threes. And it seems like they're, they're always a lot better from three anyhow. And, and I think kids adjust pretty well. I, 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 you know, I don't, 
there's probably going to be some impact with it. Um, how significant, we'll see. But, hey, boy, kids have got great range anymore. Uh, it just seems like that three-point line, they're pretty comfortable behind it. And if you're moving them back, you know, that foot, foot and a half or, or plus, um, yeah, I think there'll probably be some short-term uh, difference. But I think in, over the long period of time, these next four or five years, I think that adjustment will, will take place. And, and you'll see very good percentages down the road, too. Yeah, typically happens. There'll be a yeah. lot of diminishing returns. They'll find a distance yeah. somewhere where they go, okay, this is it. But yeah. who knows? Coach Mills uh, uh, of the thirty-two conferences, the Summit League is number one yeah. at shooting the three. Yeah. And so, I it's a great recruiting tool. Uh, uh, but by the same token, I wouldn't mind to see those percentages go down. I think we had five teams that were ranked three hundred or higher at defending the arc, and I didn't know if that was bad defense or just. Mike Dom and uh, great offense. And so I don't know how much of an impact. I think it will have some degree of an impact nationally. I honestly don't know how much of an impact it will have on this league. This is what this league does. It shoots the basketball. And maybe not the same level of athleticism um, that happens in other leagues, but very skilled from Rocky Cruiser at six foot ten, who has the ability to shoot all the way down to – little bitty guards and so that is the one thing that this league if it doesn't impact anybody it will be the summit league great observation yeah statistically it's hard to argue with how good the summit league is in, in is in that arena uh, i'm just to kind of dovetail off of that um, rule changes in general the g league's experimenting with if you get fouled on a three-point shot attempt you go to the free throw line, you shoot one free throw. If you make it, you get three points. If you miss, you play on. Same thing with a two point. <laughs> now, I'm not, you can comment on that specifically if you want. What other rule changes can you foresee or would you like to see to help make the game better uh, if possible? I'm going to start with you, Coach Mills. Yeah, I, I think that with the way the game has evolved from two post players somewhere around the block you now see a whole lot more five out uh, from the NBA, from Europe, and it's, it trickles down to eventually us, that this, you will see a widening of the lane in a very short time, I really believe, because those post players around there are gonna get pushed out further and further. And I think people really wanna open up the game. They like the free flowing aspect of the game. So I do think it's a matter of time before that uh, happens, the widening of the lane. I think that what is happening is you wanna see basketball, there's uniformity from the international level all the way down. So I also think it's a matter of time before colleges go four quarters. Mm -hmm. um, you see that internationally, um, you see it in the NBA, you see it in the women's game. And I, I, I just think that sometimes we're behind. I know the women's game this coming year is adopting sideline OBs on being able to advance the basketball uh, during timeouts. Uh, I think that'll eventually, because I think what happens at higher levels, at the, whether it be the FIBA or the NBA, eventually come down to us. Um, we're a little bit more stringent and, and kind of have our toes dug in a little bit more than most from the men's side. But the widening of the lane and the advancement of the basketball, I, I see those two happening pretty quickly. Sounds good. I, 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 it's hard to disagree with that. Coach. Yeah, well, that, those are the things. I mean, basically the two biggest things I think that you've seen that change already starting to take place in basketball at different levels and with a women's game, like Coach said. Um, and I think along with that, probably a quicker shot clock. I mean, I think that shot clock is going to change as well. Mm -hmm. uh, with all these changes, I do think it's going to go back into more of the FIBA rules, right? I mean, that's kind of the way it's heading yeah. uh, with that sideline OB as well. Um, so I just, yeah, cross between what you see in the NBA and what you see in FIBA. And the women's game has, has been making those changes. We've, we haven't. So I think we'll, we're going to have some drastic changes here in the next few years. It's interesting, as popular as the NCAA men's tournament is, that could be kind of a, a contributor at times to say, no, we don't want to change anything because it's great the way it is. But you kind of have to be willing to move. And advancing the ball on timeouts, I said this earlier, that the defensive curmudgeon in me says, no, they make him work 94 yeah. feet. But I think from an entertainment value. And, yeah, it changes it. And, and yeah, and, and then. Yeah having a list of how many sideline out-of-bounds where you had maybe one or two before, 
very interesting perspective. I appreciate those thoughts. I, I think it's uh, the game is going to continue to change, and, and if they can find ways to make it better, it makes perfect sense. Um, social media, has it changed the way you recruit, Coach Say that. Oh, yeah, absolutely it's changed. I, you, there's so much more information out there. And there's so much, you know, so much more information to put out there. You know, I think sometimes you got to be careful <laughs> of how much. Um, but there's no question it's changed. You know, kids have kids have been able to put their whole profile out there and video link. I mean, it's just it's it's such a small world anymore. And uh, so it it has, and it's continuing to change it. So it's becoming a lot easier to, you know. And, and, and there's a good way to kind of evaluate young people too and just how they run their social media accounts. It's, you know, it used to be, you know, I always tell people, you know, you watch how these young people interact with their parents, their friends, their teammates, how they handle criticism, how they, and now you can look at a social media account and, and see a lot of those things in that. And there's a lot of red flags with some of that. And, and so uh, it has, it's had a, a huge impact in recruiting and some of it's really been helpful uh, from just maybe, you know, maybe that's something we want to stay away from. So it could go both ways, there's no question. Yeah, I really like your perspective on that, gentlemen. I think it makes perfect sense. It used to be that programs would go out and critically evaluate kids before they decided if they wanted to recruit them. And now Kansas basketball has kind of changed it, where kids are looking at the program and saying, "I'm not sure about this." Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if you're. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very interesting. Yeah. Uh, perspective from that standpoint, but gentlemen, uh, love your commentary, love your feedback, love your thoughts on things. I wish you nothing but the best this upcoming season. Almost set for the second half. Let's check out numbers from the first half. First half stats are brought to you by PolyPro Concrete Coating. How about the shooting percentage for Oral Roberts? Mestadon's got to do a better job defensively. They've got to get that percentage down. But what that's created, um, keeping them off the offensive rebounds where Oral Roberts only has one offensive rebound. Uh, they got to do a better job. Neza Kwesi, he's been getting loose a little bit on the inside with 16 points. And their perimeter players uh, have combined for 18 points right off the uh, the start of that first half. So defensively, we need that energy we saw like the first two, three minutes of the game. They need to have that for 20 going in here to the second half. Macedon scored the first six points. It was a pretty back and forth first half. We were tied a couple of times, had nine lead changes. But in the later stages of that first half, Oral Roberts took control of the game with a 13-0 run after they trailed by one to begin that stretch. One thing that ORU did well in the first half, you saw only three turnovers. Well, a turnover here on their opening possession. As Matt Holba and the Macedons try to chip into an eight-point deficit. They need crisp passes, crisp cuts to the basket, good player movement. Deontay Phillips. Right there you go, right there. Good passing, good player movement. Get you an easy basket. Off your point, we can hear John Kaufman in the background just say that's the difference with this group when they work the ball like that, have those drives. But maybe it'll be a difference on the other end, whether or not they can rally. An easy two for Kevin O'Banner. And that's, uh, that's the thing, they can't come out here and just trade baskets. They got to get stops defensively and then continue that offensive movement. Dylan we, Carl posting up. You know, John, what we've seen in the past years with uh, Mastodon teams was the ability to uh, do that possession after possession for uh, lengths of time, uh, 18 minutes, 20 minutes for a half, the continuous movement like that offensively. Six consecutive winning seasons for Purdue Fort Wayne. Currently at nine and 10 against this 10 and eight Oral Roberts team that really has a misleading record. They played one of the 10 toughest schedules in the country. DeAndre Burns for three, splash. It's a big time shot right there by Burns on the perimeter. And now 
a critical call as Brian Patrick is called for his second offensive foul of the day, and that's his third foul here early in the second half and a decision to be made for John Kaufman. Yeah, he's got to get him off, off the court here for a few minutes. Here you see them. Brian kind of got that shoulder and arm in there, that off arm in there, but uh, uh, the Oral Roberts person, he was still in in movement. Tough call for the official. RJ Fuque. Shot clock down at five. Burns, the senior. The lob, Nezikwesi unable to finish on a second effort, and one. He's a man. Right there, you just saw a veteran team take the shot clock all the way down to one or two seconds, and they didn't panic. It was decent defense that time by the Mastodons, but or Roberts, they didn't panic. They waited for their opportunity, and they took full advantage of it when the shot clock was going down. Imagine this, Nezikwesi, he grew up in the Netherlands, primarily played soccer as a kid, then moved to Texas, and well, you can see how he's filled out since, and perhaps a wise decision to focus on the hardwood. One of the best players in the Summit League. This is the largest lead of the day for Oral Roberts, and it gets larger. It's 20 for Nezikwesi. Nezikwesi. He is a huge issue right now for the Mastodons and how they're going to contain him. Off to a great, great start here in the second half for Earl Roberts. Holba for three. The Golden Eagles have not won four consecutive Summit League games in five years. They're in a prime position to change that here today. Nice deal for Dylan Carl. Up ahead to Jared Godfrey. The Mastodons in transition. Good for Godfrey. That's at that transition, getting the ball in the lane, taking the ball to the basket. We need more of that. That was caused by Dylan Carl's tip out there on defense. Nezikwesi feeling it right now. Extends the range to the foul line. Reaching foul against Fuque. Then he thought he had all ball. I think he got a little bit of his arm as well. Fuque, even after the foul call, can afford to smile. This team up by 15. RJ for Rich Jr. His dad scored more than 3,000 points at Oral Roberts during his collegiate career. As his number 24 retired. <laughs> D. Barry and Phillips not on the same page. A turnover. Oral Roberts will have it when we come back. 15 and change to go, and it's a 15 point lead for Oral Roberts. This little pumpkin's BB, she's my baby, and that's why I'm here. All right, looking for something pooch friendly? Yes, I want pumpkin here to feel safe and snuggly when I want to feel rugged. Well, we got plenty of Jeeps, uh, Durango's, plenty of room for the dog in the bag. How many will fit comfortably? Uh, seven or eight adults. How many dogs? Oh, 11, 12. Shotgun BB. 13. Glenbrook Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram. We've been fetching deals since 1979. Drive a Scat Pack Dodge Charger over 10,000 off MSRP with Dodge Power Dollars at Glenbrook Dodge. Oh, she got a little too excited. I'll get a towel. My philosophy has always been, what would I do if this was my mother? You have the blessing from God to know that you're serving in a capacity that you truly love. This isn't a job to me. They're coming to us at their most vulnerable. They're coming to us at a time when they're dealing with something totally unexpected. And when you see people go through that every day, it kind of gives you uh, motivation to be your best. We have some of the best clinical staff that I have ever worked with in my 20-some years of healthcare. 
Purdue Fort Wayne's final season in the Summit League and coming into this year considered to be rather wide open South Dakota State grad graduated John Conchar preseason the coaches picked ORU to finish third early on oh they're right around in that range but they've won three in a row and they've looked pretty good here today our Summit League standings are brought to you by Three Rivers Federal Credit Union I think Oral Roberts is a team in the Summit League that is on the rise and on the rise very, very quickly. And we're seeing why here today. They got a great balance like I talked about earlier in the game. Uh, Nezo Kwesi on the inside now with 22 points. They can get it done from the perimeter. And they can play a little defense as well, John. Yeah, Nezo Kwesi, it's a tough name to spell, but it's one that people around the Summit League have become quite familiar with. He's headlined things today with 22 points and six rebounds. And I would say at this point in what we've seen, John, he's probably my choice for the best player in the Summit League I've seen so far this year. He's got plenty of talent around him, too, including DeAndre Burns, whose three makes it an 18-point game. Tamir Black, short corner. Billups soars in for an offensive rebound. Offensive rebounding is considered a hustle stat. The Mastodons now, for a 10th game in a row, have 10 or more offensive rebounds. The fact that they're down 18 here, it's not for a lack of effort. Now that they, you saw Deontay getting after it. That's his, what is that, his second offensive rebound. Earlier in the game, he had an offensive rebound for a putback. That time right here, he's going to get rewarded with two free throws. Good on the first. So right now, Oral Roberts for the game, John, shooting 62% from the field. Uh, That'll do. That's going to win you a lot of games. Billups to the bench now as Brian Patrick has come back in. And so Patrick will be playing here with three fouls with a little over 15 to go. But John Kaufman doesn't have another choice. He needs one of his best weapons out there. Yeah, he's got to go with Ryan right now. Uh, the deficit continues to climb. Francis Watsis. The Golden Eagles are on fire. You saw Francis in the first half. He couldn't come close to the hitting the rim. And that right there was all net. Offensive foul, Aismith draws the charge. It goes against Holma. Aismith only listed at 6'1", 160 pounds. That's called a jump pass right there by Matt. As soon as you leave your feet, you're out of control. And that time he ran right over the Oral Roberts player. You want to try to keep your feet on the floor at all times and pass the ball. Aismith on the other end. <laughs> Oral Roberts has not won in Fort Wayne in its last five tries. That could change today. Black. No good, and it's a strong rebound for Elijah Lufile. Right there, that's just a lack of uh, hustle and uh, determination on defense. There's no way he can get to the basket like that from the perimeter. He weaved and bobbed and weaved right through five Mastodon players for the easy layup. Hey, it's been all ORU in the second half as the Mastodons call a timeout. They're attempting to stop the bleeding down by 23 with less than 14 to go. In its fourth decade, the Summit League continues its ascent through excellence in the classroom and success in the field of play. In cities big and small, at public and private universities, more than 120,000 students across nine institutions reach for the Summit. From academic All-Americans to NCAA champions and nationally ranked teams, Summit League student-athletes achieve the pinnacle of success. The Summit League, where tomorrow's leaders reach the Summit today. 
Here on a snowy Saturday in the Summit City, Purdue Fort Wayne men's basketball is brought to you in part by CVS Pharmacy. Have you had your flu shot yet? If not, go get it at CVS, located next to Purdue Fort Wayne Student Housing. It's free with most insurance, and you can walk in and get your shot without an appointment. Don't be caught with the flu this year. Purdue Fort Wayne hosting Oral Roberts and earlier we showed a list of the top Mastodons from the last decade. It included that guy right there, Bryson Scott, Fort Wayne native. Out of Northrop High School, remember he started his collegiate career on the other side of the state in West Lafayette at Purdue, then transferred here for his junior and senior seasons. Was one of the top guards in the Summit League and today is supporting his alma mater. What I really liked about Bryson he could get a defensive rebound and go coast to coast. And we saw that time and time again, and that's really what really made him one of the top players in the Summit League. I really enjoyed watching him play and do that. Dons could use that ability here today. It's Brian Patrick for three. Offensive rebound for Cameron Benford, and he's fouled by Elijah Lufile. By the way, also in the crowd here today, Mo Evans, another guy from that List of the top 10 Mastodons from the previous decade. Those guys have both played professionally overseas. And now back at the old stomping grounds. Jared Godfrey in the corner. DeAndre Burns all by himself. Benford the rebound. Phillips spins. Intercepted by Max Asmus. It's a good call right there by the official. Good call. Moving him out with his shoulders and arms on the post up. Fila has got a football player's build at 6'8, 275. Called for the foul and now heads to the bench. Hey, here we go. But his replacement, Neza Kawazi, 6'8, 240. He's already done a ton of damage so far today. See Oral Roberts really picking up the defensive pressure here midway through the second half. Pressuring the ball, they're getting out on the ball screens, they're hedging the ball screens, they're communicating. I think they smell something good towards the end of this game right now. That's a crazy there, a bit overzealous called for the reach in. Remember, Oral Roberts at times in the past under Paul Mills has played a zone defense, that zone that Coach Mills brought over from his time as an assistant at Baylor. But now primarily a man-to-man -man team, and you can understand why with the athletes they have. Godfrey no good. Benford saves it, but here come the Golden Eagles. Fuque, pretty bounce pass. Ace Miss was leaping right there for Sports Center's top 10, and he draws a foul. Talk about fearless here for Aces. They call this running downhill, don't they? Got some snow on the ground today, and that's like you're on the slopes. Right now, you can really tell Oral Roberts out there playing loose. They're having fun. They're running up and down the court. They're scoring, and they're, they're defending. Causing all, 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 causing all kinds of headaches for the Mastodons right Yeah, now. and Ace Miss is going to be a headache for Summit League teams going forward. Mastodons won't mind missing him when they're in the horizon next year. As a freshman, he's first in the league in threes per game. Takes about three trades of contests. He's also top ten in steals defensively. Matt Holba knocked down four threes in the first half. This time it's Billups for three. Brew Fort Wayne was hot from distance 
And the first 10 or so minutes. But the tables have turned since, and it's too much Emmanuel Nezekwesi. Watch his pass on the baseline here. Watch his pass, wraparound pass, all the way across the court for the easy put down. Sam Kearns, the senior with the assist, and it brings us to a stoppage with under 12 to go. I'm gonna guess crazy in love. That is correct, let's do the second song. The Acme Bar and Grill, where neighbors meet. A Fort Wayne tradition since 1941. We feature nightly dinner specials along with our iconic pizza, wings, and pork tenderloins and barbecue in our family-friendly atmosphere with a retro flair. Additionally, we offer a full bar with 26 beers on tap from various Midwest breweries. We also have an area perfect for private events such as meetings, reunions, and banquets that holds up to 50 people. The Acme Bar and Grill, located in the heart of East State Village, where neighbors meet. This is a place where compassion lives. Strength does too. Experience, innovation, and an unwavering commitment to caring for hearts of all ages. This is Lutheran Heart Center, where an elite team of professionals comes together to work as one. From preventive screenings to complex procedures, advanced and comprehensive heart care lives here. Well, here on a week of our snow and rain today, the men's volleyball team has it right. They were just playing out in California. They had a win the other night at Cal State Northridge, three and one to start their year, ranked top ten in the nation. They'll now go to the other coast next week at NJIT in New Jersey and George Mason in Virginia. Meanwhile, women's basketball and track and field in action as well. We find something always going on on the campus of Purdue Fort Wayne. A uh, lot, a lot of activities. And now, even though the weather wouldn't suggest it, you've got baseball and softball and even golf all practicing, albeit indoors, and then they'll be taking trips south to get their spring seasons rolling soon, too. Well, speaking of travel, Making this performance by Oral Roberts today all the more impressive. They played at Western Illinois in the central time zone on Thursday night. Traveled here yesterday, an afternoon start. And Brian Patrick is called for his fourth foul, his third offensive foul. And the Kansas State transfer comes out. Got an issue right now as the clock is running. No one noticed it, <laughs> and I guess uh, at this point, perhaps it's not all that essential. I don't know if you've noticed the second half, John. The whole demeanor of the Mastodon team has changed from that first half. Well, we saw the enthusiasm, the, the pride, the determination, and I don't see that enthusiasm here the second half. Granted, they're down big right now, but still, they got to come out with a little fire. I didn't see that start the second half. Something to applaud as Billups wraps around and scores. Nice baseline move by Deontay. As a crazy with a season high 24 points here today. You watch him play, you wonder how he's not doing this every time out, just over imposing. He was sidelined for five games though earlier this year by a knee injury. Had to come off the bench for a while too. Macedons right now are not connecting on open looks, exacerbating the issue. Sam Kearns, no, Phillips controls the carom. Holba, the shot fake. Leak ahead. And it's Aiden Saunders. Right Saunders there. on the air, averaging two points a game. He's got six, and it's just that kind of day where Oral Roberts is rolling. 
got out there on the break. Nobody from the Mastodons got back, kind of stood back here at half court and ball watched. An unfamiliar position right now to find Purdue Fort Wayne. Six consecutive winning seasons along the way. A seven league regular season title. But right now it appears as though the Golden Eagles are closer to the top of the league than the Mastodons here today. An exclamation point coming here midway through this second half as Neza Kwesi, an uncontested dunk. And Coach Kaufman calls yet another timeout. We'll take one as well. It's ORU up 30. Growing up in the Midwest, I learned a lot from my dad, like how to fix a bike and balance a budget. And when it comes to money, dad always said, you need a partner you can trust. I want to teach my kids the same thing. That's why we're members of Midwest America. They're a local credit union with honest personal service and have all the tools my family needs, like checking accounts, mortgages and auto loans, and mobile banking to manage it all. Midwest America Federal Credit Union, a local partner you can trust. This is where ambition meets action. Where you can experience everything and become anything. So ask yourself, what are you going to be? A business leader. An artist. A scientist. A difference maker. A game changer. This is an education with purpose. We are Purdue University Fort Wayne. Well, after today, the Mastodons, the next two games will be on the road, then back here at the Coliseum on January 30th. And it'll be report card night, a doubleheader with the women's team. Free tickets available for kids. More details online at GoMastodons.com. Well, if you are handing out grades here today, Oral Roberts has been A caliber, and the Mastodons have not. ORU on its way to its fourth consecutive win. Well, the Mastodons here in danger of dropping their second in a row at home. Rylan Grundy, a walk-on from South Bend and off the bench, along with Tion Rollins, a redshirt freshman. It's Grundy in the corner. Got it. Rylan Grundy. That's his first three. Shot the ball with confidence that time. He caught it. Feet were set. Hands were in good position, and he let it go. And Rylan, certainly not your typical walk on it. Riley High School in South Bend a couple years ago. He was a member of one of the best teams in the state. And I believe including Ryland, all five starters wound up playing in Division One now over the last couple of years. A tremendous athlete. And even though he's only 6'5", he works out with the Macedon's big men. Incredibly strong. It's a foul against the Dons, and it brings us to our under eight timeout. Oral Roberts in control. The Acme Bar and Grill, where neighbors meet. A Fort Wayne tradition since 1941. We feature nightly dinner specials along with our iconic pizza, wings, and pork tenderloins and barbecue in our family-friendly atmosphere with a retro flair. Additionally, we offer a full bar with 26 beers on tap from various Midwest breweries. We also have an area perfect for private events such as meetings, reunions, and banquets that holds up to 50 people. The Acme Bar and Grill, located in the heart of East State Village, where neighbors meet. My philosophy has always been, what would I do if this was my mother? You have the blessing from God to know that you're serving in a capacity that you truly love. This isn't a job to me. They're coming to us at their most vulnerable. They're coming to us at a time when they're dealing with something totally unexpected. And when you see people go through that every day, it kind of gives you uh, motivation to be your best. We have some of the best clinical staff that I have ever worked with in my 20 some years of healthcare.
see a picture there of the Mastodon. John, do they change out who does that from game to game, or is that the same person? I think it's a secret who's inside of Don. <laughs> Best kept secret on campus. Well, no matter the scenario, Don, a, a fan favorite here, and part of what makes this a fun atmosphere for families and, and kids to come out here, whether at the Coliseum or on campus at the Gate Sports Center. Manuel as a crazy adding to his finest performance of the season here today. I'll tell you one thing that's not going to be much of a kept secret in the Summit Lake is the Oral Roberts Golden Eagles after today's performance. They have won three in a row coming into this one. And certainly something to be said for the way that they challenged themselves in the non-conference with the ninth hardest schedule in the country, taking trips to Oklahoma State, Iowa, Wichita State, Creighton, BYU, and then in town against Tulsa. Ryan Patrick in the corner, doesn't go, doesn't matter, he was out of bounds. Yeah, that has nothing, I mean, that, that's just gonna make you tougher come Summit League, because you know when you get within your own league, things are gonna balance out a little bit better than earlier in the season. Uh, I'm sure that was some challenging games, but when I looked at the scores of those games, they never really got blown out of any of those games that they played those top teams in. And even had to spend part of that duration without Nezuquazi. Like like we said, missed five games with a knee injury and wasn't 100% soon after that. And the thing about it, they had to play all those games on the road. And then their first two Summit League games of the season were on the road against South Dakota State in Omaha. And then here today at Fort Wayne, so what makes Oral Roberts a little bit more dangerous is that second half of the schedule, those teams are going to be coming back to Oral Roberts, to Where Tulsa, Oklahoma. 8-0 this season. A three on the other side for Demarie Jones. He's the 11th man in the rotation. Going for the Ryan Patrick. Patrick. Here the 10. Well, the success certainly contagious here for ORU today. Jones again. Patrick. Jump ball, and the arrow gives it to the dots. Like right here with 6.15 left in the game, John. Mastodons, they just cannot come down and just start launching threes whenever they want. They got to stay within their framework, uh, uh, do what they're supposed to, pass the ball. Everybody gets touches, hard cuts. That's going to be the most important thing for Coach Kaufman here the last six minutes of the game. Running there, staying within their framework. Don't leave that framework and go do something crazy on your own. Today now with 15, in spite of foul trouble, playing with four right now. Two on the shot clock, it resets up to 20. Dodds bring some of the starters back in. Yeah, Coach Kaufman going with his starting lineup again, and as he sent those guys to the scores bench, he had specific instructions for them how he wanted this game to end and how he wanted them to play out there the last 5.15 of the game. The first of two meetings between these two this year. The Dons will make the trip to Tulsa for their regular season finale on February 29th 
Don't forget, 2020, it's a leap year. A one-sided rivalry in recent years. Purdue-Fort Wayne had won eight of the last nine meetings coming in, including five straight here. As a quasi a factor on defense. As a quasi still with a high motor. Thirty for Nezakwezi. That was quite impressive. Six eight two forty at the top of the key ball fake, two hard dribbles, side steps. The one part of his game, if, if we're to play scout here, looking ahead, is that he does not have much of an outside game. Has only attempted ten threes this year. Now that said, he's actually made four of them. And he could be done here for the rest of today. Well deserved high fives and, and smiles to receive him on the bench. With 30 points, he'll wind up just a, a couple of shy of his career high set last year against North Dakota. I'm sure he'll get his own pizza tonight and he won't have to share with anybody. Yeah, that's, uh, that's just a, a typical meal probably for Nezikwesi. I should say 34, the career high for him last year against North Dakota. Apparently, Oral Roberts won't necessarily have a lot of time to enjoy this one. They have a flight out of Fort Wayne scheduled for later this afternoon. And the South Dakota next weekend. Watch the back door. Yeah, they'll have their bye, so to speak, in the midweek, no game. Or Roberts came in as the highest scoring team in the league at 78 points a game. And they have eclipsed that here with three and a half to go. move there by Deontay he just kind of plays within himself lets things happen he doesn't force anything offensively takes what he's given and uh, he capitalizes capitalizes on it very very well 10.7 rebounds for the freshman a native of Ontario from a basketball family three brothers and not only have played in college, but professionally, including one who was part of that Wichita State Final Four team in 2013. Jared Godfrey fouled on what has been a fairly quiet afternoon for him. Final media timeout, only 2.18 to go. The Acme Bar and Grill, where neighbors meet. A Fort Wayne tradition since 1941. We feature nightly dinner specials along with our iconic pizza, wings, and pork tenderloins and barbecue in our family-friendly atmosphere with a retro flair. Additionally, we offer a full bar with 26 beers on tap from various Midwest breweries. We also have an area perfect for private events such as meetings, reunions, and banquets that holds up to 50 people. The Acme Bar and Grill, located in the heart of East State Village, where neighbors meet. My philosophy has always been, what would I do if this was my mother? You have the blessing from God to know that you're serving in a capacity that you truly love. This isn't a job to me. They're coming to us at their most vulnerable. They're coming to us at a time when they're dealing with something totally unexpected. And when you see people 
go through that every day. It kind of gives you uh, motivation to be your best. We have some of the best clinical staff that I have ever worked with in my 20 some years of healthcare. Well, the hardwood set up here at the Allen County War Memorial Coliseum. The crew here is going to have a quick turnaround to Comets hockey tonight after they had Matt Ann's basketball last night. Might just stick around and pick up a little side work and help them out a little bit. Going to help pick up the uh, floor to set up the ice. I've never seen him do that, but that's kind of interesting. If you have pop up stairs, hide behind a curtain, maybe uh, sneak, sneak into the case game for later. <laughs> Next door to here, the convention center, big youth volleyball tournament going on. They say that this MLK Junior weekend is actually the busiest weekend in Fort Wayne. Multiple conventions and youth sports tournaments happening. I'm sure Parkview Fieldhouse, they usually have youth basketball tournaments this weekend as well. I'm sure there's something going on at the Ice House as well. Whether it's youth hockey, and I know Indiana Tech, they play there, all their hockey there as well. Yeah, a lot of activity. Huge, huge amateur sports town, Fort Wayne is. Oral Roberts lucky to get some hotel rooms. It's been a good visit here for the Golden Eagles on the cusp of ending a five-game losing streak in the Summit City. Patrick pops in the corner. That one's wet. 18 today for BJ. That's his fourth three. And this is a game that when you look at the final score, you won't necessarily understand the full story. New Fort Wayne set the tone early on, scored the first six points. It was a back and forth first half. Dylan a lot Carl. of silver linings, to be honest, including Dylan Carl with 10 rebounds, two off of a career high. A back and forth first half that had nine lead changes, but in the later stages of the first half, Oral Roberts down a point, then went on a 13-0 run to lead by a dozen. At the half, it was an eight-point game, but early in the second half, ORU threw some punches that the Mastodons were unable to answer. That was unnecessary. Demaria Jones, the three and the foul, a chance for a four-point play to cap this one off for Oral Roberts. Demaria Jones scoring the three-point shot. Really, one through 11 today, Oral Roberts brought it. Marcus D. Berry. Shot clock off, and Oral Roberts can dribble it out. The Golden Eagles win their fourth in a row, their first four-game winning streak in the Summit League since 2015. The Macedons had won eight of the last nine in this rivalry, including five straight at home. But Paul Mills' team triumphs today. Final score, Oral Roberts 92, Purdue Fort Wayne 68. We wrap it up after this.
Growing up in the Midwest, I learned a lot from my dad, like how to fix a bike and balance a budget. And when it comes to money, dad always said, you need a partner you can trust. I want to teach my kids the same thing. That's why we're members of Midwest America. They're a local credit union with honest personal service and have all the tools my family needs, like checking accounts, mortgages and auto loans, and mobile banking to manage it all. Midwest America Federal Credit Union, a local partner you can trust. This is a place where compassion lives. Strength does too. Experience, innovation, and an unwavering commitment to caring for hearts of all ages. This is Lutheran Heart Center, where an elite team of professionals comes together to work as one. From preventive screenings to complex procedures, advanced and comprehensive heart care lives here. This is where ambition meets action. Where you can experience everything and become anything. So ask yourself, what are you going to be? A business leader. An artist. A scientist. A difference maker. A game changer. This is an education with purpose. We are Purdue University Fort Wayne. Purdue Fort Wayne basketball. Buy your tickets now. With Jeff Parrish, John Nolan at the Allen County War Memorial Coliseum after an Oral Roberts 92 68 win over the Mastodons. Oral Roberts improving to 11 and 8 on the season and 4 and 2 in the Summit League, trailing just South Dakota State, while the Mastodons now 9 and 11 overall and 2 and 3 in the conference. They'll try to brush this one off. As we check out the team's upcoming schedule, brought to you by Evans Toyota, Thursday on the road at South Dakota, and then they'll continue that swing in the state of Nebraska a week from tonight. Omaha, one of the tougher teams that is voted early on here in the conference. That's a tough road trip right there, John. Very d difficult. To go to the Dakotas, we've talked about that many times, how that's tough to go. Uh, it's just a long, long road trip again for the Mastodons, and um, hopefully they can split at least uh, out there on this road trip. And then we'll hope to see you here at the Coliseum on January 30th against the North Dakota Fighting Hawks. Tickets available online at GoMastodons.com. And in case you can't make it here, then you can join us on CN81 and on the Go Mastodons YouTube page. Well, that does it for us here at the Coliseum. Before you know it, there's going to be ice right there where center court is as the Comets play in ECHL action later tonight. Big thanks to everyone behind the scenes on our Never End Sports Network crew, including our director, Doug Ferguson, everyone else back in the truck, including Tim Bajima, John Richards, and Steve Wright. My broadcast partner, Jeff Parrish, this is John Nolan saying thanks and so long. This has been a presentation of Mastodon Men's Basketball from Learfield IMG College. This has been a presentation from Learfield IMG College.